Oh my goodness, hello kids, how are you? Let me grab Shannon. Whoa, hi everybody. Hey. Goodness, hello kids, how are you? Let me grab Shannon. Whoa, hi everybody. Hey, so how are you doing? I'm doing great, I just came out from a black hole. <laughs> a black hole, can you believe it? Today we're gonna be talking about star knowledge, which is the reason why we came out of a black hole. And I think we're gonna have a special guest named... Wilford Buck. And you know what? I think he's coming. <gasps> Oh, there he is! Oh, he's going this way, he's going this way. Oh, oh! Hey, it's Wilford! Woo! Wow, I can't believe it's Wilford Buck. It's so nice to have you here. Incredible. Nice to be here. Oh, oh look at these, all these awesome children over here. Yeah. So I guess first off, what's your... What's your traditional native name? Well, I am known as Obuame Negete Tichigao, which means uh, the uh, dream keeper. Wow. That is so cool, the dream keeper. And where are you from? I'm from a place called Opaskia Cree Nation in north central Manitoba on the banks of the Saskatchewan River. Wow. Sounds so beautiful. And what would you call your people? We are called Inenio. They're known in history books and uh, throughout the education system as the Cree, but uh, we don't refer to ourselves as the Cree, we refer to ourselves as Inenio or Neoho. And Beautiful. basically it breaks down as of the four. Of the four. Beak, Nesto, Neo. No. Beak, Nesto, Nesto, Neo. What language is that? That's uh, Inenio, that's Cree language. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And can you tell us a little bit about your culture, your history, and how did you, and also how did you get involved with learning about the stars? Well, originally my people roamed pretty much all over uh, North America, as all indigenous uh, people did. For my people, we encountered the Europeans on the banks of the Saskatchewan River, and the Europeans uh, came down from Hudson Bay, and they followed all the uh, inland uh, river routes. And the uh, Saskatchewan River starts at the headwaters are in uh, the Rocky Mountains. So the Saskatchewan River runs right across, all across the plains into the, uh, the big lake known as uh, Lake Winnipeg, and then empties into the Hudson Bay. And that's how the Europeans came up those rivers. Hmm, that's so interesting. And how did you get into star knowledge? Because that's, that's such an amazing thing to know about. Well, the term Inenio, is, uh, it means of the four, and of the four literally connects us to that sky world. From there, we'd uh, learn about stories through, through the language, through the songs, through the ceremony, and through the tellings of uh, somebody called Wisage Chak. Wow. And is Wisage Chak an important person? Now, uh, Wisage Chak was a sacred being. He's one of our first teachers. And uh, he was a trickster, and he was, uh, some people you could say, he was a shapeshifter. And one of the jobs he was given was uh, to name everything on Turtle Island. Mekinapmanistic, we call Turtle Island. And uh, so he, his job was to name everything, and everything that he named, he could had the ability to turn into. So he was a trickster, he was, always uh, trying to get free food, always trying to get out of work, always trying to make tricks on everybody. And he got in all kinds of trouble. That sounds like me. 
Sorry, kids, but that, I'm not Wasaki Chuck, but that sounds a lot like me. He is a trickster. <laughs> um, I have to ask, Wilfred, uh, a long time ago, were, were there any customs or, or ceremonies that you did on the land as you lived your life there? Oh, there was uh, pretty much the life uh, centered around uh, ceremony. Mm. Because everything that uh, we we have attained and everything we owed, we, we, our life was owed to the land. The language came from the land. All the, all our practices came from social norms came from the land. All the all the teachings and all the uh, how we should be treating other beings came from the land. And this was in relation because we lived on that land and it was very important. Has your people always lived on the land? Yes, as uh, like uh, all indigenous people, uh, they. Uh, pretty much lived on the land and they got everything from that land. Prior to the coming of the Europeans, there was a fully functioning governmental system, government in operation. Beautiful. So I got to ask another question, Wilfred, while we have you here, before you zoom off into space somewhere, um, your name, the Keeper of Dreams, it's in your language. It's such a beautiful name. Can you talk about the importance of your language? Languages are important. Like I was saying, that uh, languages connects us to the uh, to the land. It connects us to the environment, but also it connects us to something called acha. And uh, acha is a uh, light, energy, spirit. And we're told this is what we are. This is our essence, the basic essence of who we are. We are light, energy, spirit. And then we look up in that night sky and we see all those lights up there. And again, those are light, energy, spirit. So we're connected. To, to that place. We're directly connected to that sky and directly connected to all the energy around us. The, all the living plant world, the animal world, the water world, the sky world, connected to everything through energy. Beautiful. Wow, so we're a light of energy? Yes, we are. Every, everything is energy. Even science tells us that uh, in our basic form, we're made of atoms, made of atoms and made of molecules. And all of these are central energy. That's amazing. Talking about energy, I'm kind of getting really, really hungry here, kids. Uh, can you talk about maybe some of the foods that you ate, that you eat as a as a Nihao person? Oh yeah, we, like we're saying uh, again, uh, all indigenous people lived off the land, and uh, we lived off the ebbs and flows of the environment and the uh, the patterns of the animals. And uh, for my people, one of the uh, staple foods was uh, muswa. Muswa is uh, the moose. And uh, the moose was very central to uh, to my people's existence, as were a lot of the uh, the plants. One, one of the, the the English words that they have for my people is called muskego, muskego or swampy Cree. and that's because we lived in the boreal forests in where the swamp areas, where the beavers were, where the moose were, where where all these uh, animals were that lived on 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 these types of environments, and a lot of the birds, migratory birds as well. I think that's really amazing. Kids, I'm gonna do a quick moose call for you. I want you to listen. Whoa! <laughs> that's quite the moose call. Hopefully one doesn't come running out oh dear right now. That'd be kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wilford, so moose, fish of course, ducks, all these things, your culture is so connected to the land and the stars and everything else. Um, what's one thing that you would like to share with the young people today, in today's world, because things are moving so fast. Yes, yes, things are very fast, especially in the artificial environment we live in. And when we live in an artificial environment, we're, uh, we're disconnected from the natural process of, of that energy that I spoke of earlier. Everything is connected, that energy flows. And if you disconnect yourself from that energy, then uh, things uh, get very uh, crazy, is one way to put it, because uh, we live in a very fast-paced life. And right nowadays, a lot of people, are out, a lot of young people are walking around with a phone stuck in their face like this all the time. They forget to look at that night sky, they forget to look at the environment around them. And th th that part, our, our elders tell us that environment is what gives us our healing. That environment gives us uh, our direction, our understanding, our hope. So Wilfred, what is one, one thing that we can do to slow down? How do we slow down if things are going so fast? What do we need to do? Well, one of the ways we do is we sit and we listen to people. Hmm. Everybody has uh, their own knowledge to share. And one of the uh, 
methodologies. Prior to coming to the Europeans, we had our own methodological processes of coming to knowledge. And one of them, our elders told to tell us is to get the youth to travel. And when they travel, they meet new people, they're, they get exposed to new ideas, new experiences, new, new visions, they see new things, they taste new things, they smell new things. And, and in that sense, they, they can uh, disconnect them from that artificial world and slow them down and become in tune with, the, with these new uh, perspectives. That's beautiful. Thank you, Wilford, for coming and sharing with everybody. Yeah, I think it's amazing. Any last word for the kids? Yes, kids, Hawashisha. I want to uh, encourage you, your young people, to uh, take, take the time to uh, sit down and go outside and look at that sky because uh, that sky is very important. And uh, like I said, we've disconnected ourselves from that sky. And once we get back and look at that sky, we'll see what an amazing place that is and how we're a part of that, that amazing place. Hey, where? Whoa! What, where what did, happened to Wilford? I think he went back home. In a spaceship? <laughs> <laughs> see you, kids. Bye.